morning everyone. So this week's virtual assembly is on the topic of women in science. So you may or may not know, but it is International Women's Day on Monday the 8th of March and that falls within British Science Week. So it is Science Week this week as well. So I'm going to be doing a little talk with you that sort of ties in those two themes and sort of looks at some influential women in science. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, I know I don't teach all of you. Um, my name is Miss Latif and I'm the head of biology here at AUEA. So I am a science teacher, but I am predominantly a biologist. Um, so when I was at school, I sort of loved science and I knew I wanted to do a degree in science, but never knew which science I wanted to sort of go into. Um, eventually, I decided to do a degree in biochemistry at the University of Birmingham and sort of halfway through my first year realized actually I don't think this is the right degree for me I didn't really enjoy it very much um, so I think if you're ever in a position where you um, feel like you're not enjoying something or something isn't right for you I think it's okay to change your mind okay um, so I sort of changed my mind decided actually I'm going to switch to biology so I then switched to a biology degree and about halfway through my degree decided to specialise in genetics. So a couple of years later, I then graduated with a degree in biology with a genetics specialism. So um, that's just a little bit about me and what my sort of specialism is and what I'm interested in. So biology, but particularly DNA and understanding how DNA works. Um, so what I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is three very influential women in the field of science who you may or may not have heard of. So this first slide over here just gives you an overview of eight sort of important women in the field of science who you may know about, you may know about their work and their contributions. I'm only going to be focusing on three today. So the first person I'm going to talk about is Dr. Patricia Bath. So Dr. Patricia Bath is a um, pioneer in the field of optometry. So I know many of you here at AUEA um, want to pursue a career in optometry and obviously we do have these links with the School of Optometry at Aston University. So this might be of interest to you because Dr Patricia Bath actually discovered and invented a new device and technique for cataract surgery. Those of you in year 9 and year 11 who we um, talk a lot about the anatomy of the eye with and we do eye dissections, you guys should know a little bit about cataracts and how it works. Um, so she invented a new technique for cataract surgery. So she was the first woman to chair an ophthalmology residence program in the United States and also the first female ophthalmologist to be appointed to the faculty of the University of California at Los Angeles School of Medicine. So she really paved the way for women in her field, which is the field of optometry. Second person I'm going to be talking about is someone called Dr. Margaret Liu. So growing up, um, Margaret had a very sort of difficult um, upbringing. Her family really struggled financially, mainly because of her father's sort of sudden death. On top of that, her mum found it really difficult to find a job because of racial prejudice. And unfortunately, this racial prejudice is still something which goes on today. So despite her extensive qualifications and education and experience, she really struggled to find a job and that meant they struggled financially. Um, despite all of that, Margaret was very sort of studious. She worked really hard at school. She was very bright and she was very gifted, particularly in science. So she then went on to get a PhD and work as a researcher in the field of um, genetics and immunology. So one thing that she did was she provided evidence that gene based um, immunization or gene based vaccines can protect us against some very serious viral infections. So that's the idea that you are using a gene inside your vaccine instead of a pathogen. So we know that uh, vaccination has been around for years now, but when we first discovered vaccination, we used to use a dead or weakened form of a pathogen to immunize against the disease. But we now use genes instead of the pathogen itself, which is a little bit more effective and a bit safer as well. So the COVID vaccines, which we are currently using, are actually gene-based vaccines. So if it wasn't for the work of people like Dr. Margaret Liu, we wouldn't have the understanding about that kind of vaccine that we now have. The final person I'm going to talk about is Professor Dame Elizabeth Anyonwu. So she was a British um, nurse, or she is still a nurse, she still practices sometimes. So. Um, what I love about this story is that she, like many of us, was born and raised in Birmingham. Um, again, she had a very difficult upbringing. Her parents separated when she was very young and her stepfather was then quite abusive. Um, she then went into care and spent nine years in care. She had a very sort of negative experience in care and did not enjoy it at all. So because of that, she wanted to sort of gain this independence um, quite early on and sort of pave her own way 
in life. She then, um, at the age of 16, started to train as a nurse. So she went to a nursing school and she then became the United Kingdom's first sickle cell and thalassemia nurse specialist and also helped establish the first UK sickle cell centre. Um, so she again was like a pioneer in her field. Since then, she's gone on to get a PhD and also a DBE from the Queen. Um, so she's now also a professor at the University of London, um, of West London. So she really sort of turned her life around and, you know, went from having a very difficult upbringing to um, so many sort of successful awards and accolades in her career. So that is all I have time to talk to you guys about today. Um, Hopefully that's given you a little bit of information about some of the women in science who've made a really big contribution to the field. Obviously, um, that's just really the tip of the iceberg of the women who've made contributions in science, but hopefully that's inspired you guys to research some more. If there's any of you out there who want to pursue a career in science, um, particularly in biology, and you're a bit unsure and you have questions um, that you're a bit sort of confused about, feel free to come and speak to me and I'm happy to give you guys advice about going into science or biology. But that is all from me. Thank you for listening, guys.